Today I will be showing you how to correct lens distortion and vignetting using Raw Power version 3.3. I'll be using the Mac, but everything I'm showing is the same on Raw Power for iOS. Raw Power also has a tool for correcting chromatic aberration, but that's a topic for another day. Distortion is most often seen at wide angles, say at 24 millimeters for a 24 to 105 lens. Vignetting also is often seen at wider angles, but is more often a function of lens aperture. The wider the aperture, the more vignetting, also called lens shading, will appear. There are two ways to correct for this kind of lens issue. One is to take pictures of a grid, and another is just to eyeball your own images and correct them as you go. While a grid is the best way to get an excellent result, it's easy to spend way too much time trying to perfect the correction when all you need is five seconds with a slider. So, I'll start with a quick correction of a few images and then show you how to correct lenses in a more deliberate manner. For many cameras, Apple's RAW decoder provides built-in lens corrections. But if your camera doesn't fall into that category, you'll need to correct it yourself. RAW Power has a lens correction adjustment which comes with a semi-automatic mode that will correct images automatically based on your previous corrections. So it learns from you. That way, you don't have to keep correcting images as you go along. Let's start with this image, shot at 24 millimeters of Apple's headquarters. Well, actually, this is the previous headquarters. The first image doesn't have any lens correction applied. The second does, and it's a JPEG corrected by the camera. So in this case, we can compare our work to what the camera did. We're not striving for perfection. That can wait for a more carefully shot set of images. You can see the focal length here in info, as well as underneath the histogram. What I've done here is create two tabs in raw power. They're pointing at the same directory, but it lets me easily compare two images. It's a handy little trick to have since the app doesn't have the ability to show two images side by side. So you can easily see the difference between the camera Jenner JPEG, this one, and the uncorrected image here. Here is the lens correction adjustment. If you don't see it, then you can find it here in the Add Adjustments menu. In the lens correction adjustment, there's also a question mark button, which will bring up this video. So if you ever want to watch it again, it's easy to get to right there. There's also the Auto button, which I'll cover later, and the usual set of uh, additional options like Reset and Default Management and stuff like that. If I want to fine tune the results or if I want maximum flexibility, the advanced sliders are available and the devignetting sliders are at the bottom of the adjustment. You can see some pretty obvious vignetting in the corners of the image here. But I'm not going to do that right away because here's a very important tip. Don't correct vignetting until you have first corrected lens distortion. That's because distortion will always crop the image slightly and often it will move the vignetting right out of the frame. And less work is better, right? In this case, I can tell because I have the JPEG that this image has barrel distortion rather than pin cushion. So barrel distortion is when the center of the image appears to be closer to you than the edges. And pin cushion, the center of the image appears to be farther away from you than the edges. Now, if I didn't know that, I could just move the distortion slider back and forth and just kind of see if it gets better or worse. Okay, that's a lot worse, so that's not right. So I'm gonna move it this way. Now the important thing is you don't really generally have to move very far. It depends certainly on the quality of the lens and the amount of distortion you have, but you don't need to overdo it. I mean, you can keep pushing it, but then you'll start getting a different kind of distortion. You can see here. Now you can see if you look at the, at the road or the buildings, how now the edges are starting to seem like they're coming toward me. So I'm over correcting at that point. Really for this image, all I need is something around 0.1 or negative 0.1. You compare it to the JPEG, you can see it's quite similar. The JPEG is a little bit less cropped, but other than that, the overall appearance is essentially the same. So overall, I've got a good correction. And notice that vignetting is gone. So just like I said, there's no need to correct the vignetting because the distortion correction took care of that uh, in the process of cropping the image. Okay, I'm done correcting that image. I'm gonna show you the auto feature. Now, if I have another 
24 millimeter image, it will correct itself when I hit the auto button. There's actually a way for it to correct it even without hitting the auto button, but for this purpose, I'm gonna show it to you uh, by hitting the button myself. So here we have another image shot at 24 millimeters. When I hit the auto button, it just corrects it. Again, no vignetting, no distortion. Raw power automatically applies corrections if the image is shot with the same lens, camera, and focal length. Of course, it's not easy to have exactly the same focal length unless you're at the limits of the lens, so it will also correct shots taken with similar focal lengths. The default is 10%. So if you have a lens that's shot within 10% of something you've already corrected, then Raw Power will simply use the same corrections and apply it. Let me bring up Preferences so you can see where that's all controlled. Down at the bottom of the Editing tab of Preferences, you'll see the Lens Correction options. This first checks box automatically apply lens correction when possible. The percentage of focal length, I mentioned it starts at 10%, but you can change that. It will, it will apply it to a wider range for any given correction. So I've applied it 24 millimeters. If I increase this number to say 40%, the maximum, then it'll take 40% of 24, which is about 9.6. And so 9.6 plus 24, so it'll go out to about 33 to 34 millimeters. and it will apply the exact same correction. So that's convenient and can make things quick, but you generally don't want to push that too far because at that much of a difference of focal length, distortion actually changes. As I mentioned, distortion is most at the wide angle end of the lens. If you go too far out, the distortion does meaningfully change. And so just having raw power stamp it is really not going to be your best choice. This last checkbox here says only apply to raw images. And again, this is just for automatic correction. For some cameras, the RAW will come uncorrected, but the JPEG will come corrected. In that case, you don't want to have RAW power apply a second lens correction to it. So in that case, you want to have this turned on so it only does its automatic magic uh, for RAWs. Here's an image taken at 26 millimeters. That's within 10% of 24 millimeters. So when I click the auto button, it will correct it the same way. This image, 903, is shot at 29 millimeters. That's more than 10%. So when I click on the auto button, I'll get that same error message as before. There's just not enough information for raw power to apply the correction automatically. Raw power can do more than just correct nearby focal lengths. Let's look at this image here. This one is shot at 42 millimeters. If you compare it to the camera JPEG, you'll notice something interesting. The raw image actually has pin cushion distortion. At 24 millimeters, the image had barrel distortion. But as you increase the focal length, it actually switches to a point where it becomes actually pincushion distortion. The center of the image appears farther away. You can see that here. So that's another very clear reason why you don't want to just stamp the adjustment. The distortion really does change. So I'm going to have to move the slider not to a negative like I did for the, this one, but actually to a positive to bring that forward. You see right there. Again, it's a small correction, 0.03 in this case. As you can see here, it's pretty much dead on the money. But I have negative 0.1 at 24 millimeters and positive 0.03 at 42 millimeters. Not a huge difference in millimeters, but the lens actually really does have a very different effect. So what happens if I pick a focal length in the middle? Well, I've got one right here. This one is shot at 35 millimeters. So you can see we had 24, we've seen 26, 29, 42, 35. You don't have to do a lot of work on all of these images. I'm just showing you how different focal lengths are affected by auto or when auto can and cannot work. So 35 is going to be too much for the built-in, that 10% number I was talking about. Um, but raw power does have data both from the 24 and the 42. So what can it do with that information? Well, again, let's look at the JPEG versus the RAW. So here's the JPEG, there's the RAW, okay? So what happens when I hit that auto button? Remember at 24, we were at negative 0.1. 
And for the other image, we were at positive 0.03. Well, Rapar picked a number of negative 0.03, which is in between those two numbers. So essentially, it's interpolating between the 24 and the 42 and figuring out what number in the middle would be. So how did that turn out? How well did that work? Well, let's look at the JPEG. You can see it's actually, yeah, it's right. Again, the crop is slightly different, but the distortion has been corrected properly. So if I were to wind back and start over again, if I did the 42 and the 24 and just did those two, then all the ones in the middle will get corrected automatically. So I really only have to do a few images in the focal range to actually get correction for this lens and camera. And remember, you don't even have to hit the auto button. We're doing it here just so I can tell you exactly when I'm doing it and show you the before and afters. But if you have that preference set, just opening the image in the editor will automatically apply the correction for you. You don't have to do anything. So where does Raw Power store this information about corrections and focal lengths and all that kind of stuff? It maintains a small database that records the corrections you've made and keys them to the camera model, the lens, the focal length, and it also records the aperture. I mentioned the aperture because devignetting can be affected by aperture, so it does store that extra piece of information. So if you put this particular lens on a different body, the lens correction information may be different and you'll have to do it again. You may find at that point you can copy and paste in order to fill out the database entries just by copying and pasting lens correction uh, adjustment to different images. I haven't talked that much about D-vignette because distortion correction eliminated the vignetting. However, I will discuss the sliders in case you need them. So let's go back to that first image. Okay, there are three sliders. The first is the amount of D-vignette to apply, which will brighten the image. You can see it subtly changing those edges right there. If you want to affect more of the image or less of the image, you can move this radius slider. You can see you can really work on a lot besides just the extreme edges or extreme corners of the image. Then there's also fall off. So radius is sort of the width of the, uh, the vignette, the area that's going to be lightened. Amount is how much it lightens it. And then fall off is sort of the steepness of how how the devignetting effect is applied. So is it going to kind of lighten the image smoothly to the center, or is it going to, uh, is it going to lighten it um, much more at the edges and then kind of quickly go to almost no effect? So that's, so that's fall off. So fall off will look a little bit like radius, but it's really not the same. And so depending on how your lens actually behaves at the corners, will determine whether you want to use the uh, fall off or the radius. Most of the time, keep fall off at zero because if you really need to push the D vignette, you have that option, but I would play mostly with amount and uh, with radius. The last thing I want to show you is uh, how to do lens correction by shooting a target image. I made one that you can download and you can find the, the link to it in the video description. What I do is I tape it to a board and then shoot at different focal lengths as you can see here, I've done with these images down here at the bottom. For best results, have enough light and try to keep the camera level with the target. Otherwise, you're going to have skew, which will affect your ability to correct it properly. Now, I've actually taken the whole frame. You can see the paper, the board, and actually some carpet. Uh, you don't need to actually capture the whole thing. I'm just showing you this so you can see how I've actually taped the paper uh, to the board. So instead, I'm going to go to this other image here. Again here, you can see just how much distortion there really is in this image. So I can correct this pretty easily. Again, this is barrel distortion. So barrel distortion, you move to the left, like that. Now, when you're gonna have a test target like this, it's gonna be very unforgiving. Anything that you've got in terms of how you held the camera, if there's a little bit of bubble where the paper wasn't perfectly flat, is gonna to look to you like some extra distortion that may or may not really be there. What you really wanna do is get pretty close pretty quickly, which I've done. And you can see here, minus 0.48. So, so much more distortion than we were getting with the other lens. You can see how different it is from lens to lens and camera to camera. We compare that to the JPEG, you see it's really quite similar. 
And even in the camera JPEG, you can see, see these lines here, it's not straight. So that's not a function of distortion. That's just how the, either the paper was or how I held the camera. So you really need to be uh, aware of that so you don't overdo it. Okay, I'll briefly show you these advanced sliders. They are designed to work on different portions of the image. For example, the inner slider will actually distort that area right there, you see? So if I've got some either extra distortion in the center or not as much, I can just play around with just that center area right there. The middle and outer ones also work similarly to um, manipulate those edges. So you can mess with these four sliders if you like, but I don't think it's generally gonna be necessary. It's there just in case the main slider doesn't do what you want uh, due to the type of lens you have or the type of distortion or just th the way you want to correct it. And that's a tour of lens correction in Raw Power 3.3, distortion and devignetting. I hope this was helpful to you and I will see you next time.